So this isn't really a new problem for warriors, but I felt that the new Broken Code book Silent Thaw is perfect for talking about it. In terms of creating conflict and stakes, the book did a great job. It's up there with the best of Warrior Cats. Possessed Bramblestar is one of the most interesting opponents that these books have ever gotten. In terms of creating discussion, again, amazing job. There's a huge mystery element as we try to figure out the imposter's intentions. Also, there's a bunch of really good themes that are kept consistent. Superstition, corruption, confidence, honesty. But there's just one big problem. This book lacks strong emotion. It can get you frustrated, it can get you excited, it can get you intrigued. It can even creep you out a little. But this book does not make you feel sad, it doesn't make you feel love, it doesn't make you feel triumph, and that's my problem. All three protagonists had so much going for them before getting their emotional development tragically cut short. I love Rupa. I try really hard to interpret him in a way that gives him meaning about learning to be proud of who you are. But they really botched his story this time. Warrior Cats has a very frequent problem when making flawed protagonists. I call it the Alderheart effect. The character starts out with a very relatable and inhibiting struggle such as Alderheart's anxiety. And then, once the character gets properly mixed up in the story's major conflicts, their personal struggles are just forgotten. Once he took up the medicine cat position, his anxiety quickly becomes a non-factor. He's still a cat that worries about things, but it just stops being an obstacle. And we never see the transformation that changed things for him. Just growing out of it, I guess. At least that's how I saw it. Rupa has clear issues with social anxiety and self-image. When we are introduced to him, he struggles with his confidence. With the Silent Thaw, the struggles are still there, but they are widely inconsistent. His fears don't really translate into his actions. Rupa subjects himself to embarrassment time and time again to progress the story. He gets loud to get attention from a patrol, he sneaks in the Thunder Clan, he's okay with cats thinking he is motivated by a forbidden crush, he speaks up at a gathering for crying out loud. Yet, he's super afraid of cats knowing that he has a special power. I get that everyone experiences anxiety differently, but Rootpaw's relatability just falters a bit here. If you're writing a story about a character that struggles with confidence, then make them struggle with confidence. We had such a solid storyline. Rootpaw has the knowledge to prove Bramblestar is an imposter, but he can't share it because he's afraid cats won't believe him and ridicule his absurd theory. So what you're supposed to do is make Rootpaw struggle. Make him go to ThunderClan and mess everything up, not speaking or revealing anything to any cat. Cats assume he is a joke because he's only there for Bristlefrost. Rupa gets his warrior assessment cancelled for breaking the code. He's judged harshly for his mistake, and even Bristlefrost starts to hate him a bit for reflecting poorly on her reputation. Rupa is the only cat capable of spreading the truth about Bramblestar, but he messes up because he's afraid. And this is how you set up a character! You give them mistakes that they have to be responsible for, and they have to face low points in their life. Only then can they grow. Imagine if Tree was the first and only cat that Rootpa managed to open up to. It could be seen as his first small step in giving himself a voice. Then, Tree eventually speaking on Rootpa's behalf at Stemleaf's meeting and in Shadow Clan would have had so much more meaning. Rootpa has the chance to have a very personal struggle of his challenged in a safe environment. And it's the first step in becoming more confident in himself, which could lead to restoring his friendship with Bristlefrost by the end of the book. That would be much more emotional. But instead they made it way too easy for Rootpa, and we never get the chance to see him open up and be vulnerable. And that's just Rootpa. He's still my favorite out of the three protagonists. Bristlefrost time. Now, what they've set up with Bristlefrost is actually pretty interesting. Albeit, very similar to Ivy Pool and Violet Shine in the sense that they get the trust of the big bad guy and have to deal with trying to hold their trust while also working with others to defeat them. We end up having the same problem that we had with Rootpa. Bristlefrost doesn't really make you feel things. She makes a mistake in trusting the false Bramble Star, but there's no consequence aside from some light punishments that she only feels a little guilty about. 
If I could change Bristlefrost, I guess I would just want her to be more reactive and upset when things happen. Her clan is literally falling apart. That's gotta be at least a little traumatic. Also, we desperately need more development for the friendship between Bristlefrost and Stemleaf. Show the readers that Stemleaf can still be there for her even if they don't see each other in a romantic way. With Spotfur's dumb punishment, you'd think that would open up a little more opportunity for a back and forth between the two, but there's a surprising lack of conversations. With Stemleaf being the first cat to organize rebellion against Bramblestar, and Bristlefrost being the first cat to suck up to Bramblestar, there was an interesting dynamic between them that just wasn't tapped into. As she was fed information, Bristlefrost changed pretty much on her own. I just think it would have been a lot more interesting if she had some nasty arguments with Stemleaf or Rootpaw along the way. Finally, Shadow Sight. To put it lightly, Shadow Sight could use a lot of work. Antford dies because he couldn't speak up for himself, and he feels guilty for, like, a moment. Antfur is the one death in this book, and they don't even try to make it emotional. They just move on, business as usual, worrying about whether it's a Stein from Star Clan. Which, admittedly, is a really interesting theme in this book. The discussion on superstition is rich. Shadow Sight is so desperate to please Star Clan that he reveals his obviously fishy vision because he thinks Star Clan is using their powers to turn the trees against Shadow Clan. It's so dumb and unreasonable, but a perfect representation of what superstition is. You're so desperate to find a meaning or solution that you just don't use your brain. And in Shadow Sight's case, he gets his priorities out of order and he lets his mother suffer as a result. That's some pretty good character development. I'll give it that. The problem is that Shadow Sight really doesn't take much time to reflect on his mistake. It's just, oop, I was wrong, but now I'm not stupid anymore, yay! And that could have been fixed so fast. Just have one scene where Puddle Shiner Tigerstar yells at him and tells him that the clans are on the verge of war because of him, but they're just super forgiving to the dude. There's a small loss of respect, but I want full on scolding. Only then does it really open up a need for Shadow Sight to redeem himself. You see, when you have a character and they make a mistake, they suffer from the mistake. They learn from the mistake. And then they have to redeem themselves by proving that they have learned from the mistake. Warrior Cat's characters just like to skip step four. The moment Bristlefrost and Shadowpaw learn that they did wrong, they're just automatically forgiven and have nothing else to prove. That's like if you fall off a cliff and when you hit the ground, you automatically teleport back to the top. Part of the journey is seeing how the characters pick themselves back up when they fall, but we just aren't seeing that with these two. And Rupa just doesn't make mistakes at all, so he's a completely different issue. Now, don't get me wrong, The Silent Thaw is by all means a good book. It's just not a perfect book. And the biggest flaw that I see is the lack of character moments. I get that they want time for all the action surrounding the main conflict, but there's just a weird emptiness when the main protagonist feels so bland and uninspired. Even Rupa, who is so darn easy to connect to, makes me feel nothing in this book. Sorry to be so negative, but just know that I only criticize this book because I love it, and I want to see the next four Broken Code books be even better. That's all. Bye everyone!